fun. But no, I, I really respect the uh, the. I don't even know the respect. The calm the demeanor. Calm demeanor. Thank you. I was gonna say respect the respect, but I guess that's already done. That's all right. That these guys have, and they it, also it really allows you to kind of do the second nature things that you have practiced the entire time, and not be chaotically thinking about all this crazy stuff. So yep. I digress. Focus. And we are now in two picks and bands. Yep. Focus, something of which the teams definitely have in those fights like you're talking about. And all right, looks like the priority with the Kazix band goes over to the Varus, not unexpected. Really wanted to see some Jace. It's all right. Saw some Jace earlier. Still. That Jace input. Seraph, as you said, picking up the Varus. I don't see why the Jin wouldn't be grabbed. Yep, Jin. Maybe pick up their jungler here as well if they want to play Lee Sin. Uh, or if they really highly value like a Maokai early on, uh, that could be interesting. But I would expect the Lee Sin for contracts, considering there's two jungle bans already. You don't show much. You don't get counterpicked very heavily. Unless there's something like a Syndra that they really have priority on them too. So we'll see. Cloud nine. Oh, Zyra's up, actually. Uh, oh, for support? Yeah, yeah actually. Whew, how did I? Okay. Ah, the tree. Okay. You thought it would be Mauka. All right. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it's the other tree. I was duped. <laughs> it was Ivern all along for Cloud nine. This Rex I pick up happens. I feel we will see something a little more carry heavy for Sarah from the top lane. But Ivern, though, Ivern just provides so much protection. You can run a high damage mid laner like a Cassiopeia here for Jensen and be completely fine. So you have to wear, you have to be worried about what Cloud9's last pick is here, because it could be a high damage one that synergizes with the Ivern. Impact has enough champions up top that he can play. And if you're red side and you pick like a Cassiopeia, you can ban out Orianna, you can pinch the mid lane pool afterwards. Force them onto something else there. All right. Actually, Lyra goes for more damage in the jungle. Much more damage in the jungle. Now with the lethality changes, goes for Graves. See on the side of Cloud9 what they have in their bag of picks. Ah, the counter pick for the support. Okay. So, even though Malzahar, Lulu, Misfortune, oh. It would be impossible to ban out all of them. Mm -hmm. And they would get first pick in the second round. So now they get to kind of pinch the champion pool of the mid lane a little bit more. Cassiopeia, okay. I was expecting that to go into the hands of Cloud9, especially since uh, Cassiopeia was not picked by Envy when they had known they were playing into a rise. So I would imagine the, cor the Corky uh, is higher priority for Envy instead of the Cassiopeia. Maybe Cloud9 looking for the double AD carry composition, a double marksman with the Corky for themselves in the mid lane. I didn't. I wouldn't think it's a Katarina. I will say. I will say that much. Uh, Katarina allows you to get maybe something that might be left up though, and you can say maybe Jensen will play that. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone in hopes. Side of Cloud9, 10 seconds left. It is going to be that Syndra. Wow, mid lane. Getting kind of small. Yeah, and it's most likely the Corky from the way that the bands are coming out here from Cloud9. It would synergize well with the composition. And then they would need a top lane tank like a Maokai. They could run double tree. Double tree and three uh three marksmen. Uh gangplank. I was gonna say, Envy would love to get Corky here. I feel like Ninja really, really, really wants it, but it's risky because this is what you do. You give up that. Yeah. Uh, and Corky goes over to Jensen. I don't know. Like, do they really? Would they really want to play Gangplank on Cloud 9 side and say we have Gangplank, double marksman, we have an Ivern, we have yeah. no tank in our composition if they do that, which I think Envy would be okay with. Now they take away the Maokai, so they're running double marksman with the, the jungle graves. But this composition from Envy, decent amount of pick, high damage, but it's relying on Seraph getting into these fights for the uh, the root and also ball delivery because he's yeah. the only frontliner. He's the only person who wants to be in contact with the enemy team. And they're gonna pick Shed. They're gonna have global pressure here. You'd think they'd want the Maokai, but it got taken away. But I don't think it does any favors for Envy, the fact that they took the Maokai. We're gonna see. The swap of this match now. Seraphon, the Maokai, impact on the Shen. So we'll see how that goes in his favor. 
because if if Seraph can't or goes through the same way last time, that's not going to be a very tanky Maokai, even though that's just about what he is. Picks and bands finished up now. You see the priority towards that mid lane puts Ninja back onto Orianna. Actually, not a very bad pick for him. Varus Sire bot lane for Envy here keeps them nice and safe. They've played a bit of the Melzahar before, and we saw them pushing Sneaky and Smoothie back. Priority in the lane, but not a CS lead. So we'll keep an eye on that lane as yep. well this time to see if Envy can kind of take it to the next level with that push in lane. Yeah, based on professional matchup knowledge from what we know, uh, these are close to three winning lanes for Cloud9. They have the advantage in the top lane uh, a little bit or a little bit later in the game after Maokai's Q wave clear is uh, passed by like a Tiamat or a Bami Cinder purchase from the Shen and the pressure that he provides. The core keepers, the Orianna has a little bit more poke, a little bit more whittle down damage. And then the bottom lane is the same thing, more whittle down counter to the Zyra or what people would consider with the misfortune here. So Cloud9, like the draft looks really good for them. Question is contracts on this Ivern. He's been that rookie, he's aggressive. Let's see what happens with this tree. I was just going to say, it. his first game coming in on Kha'Zix, the team was all behind him, invading the Reds there when he needed them. And it's weird to see that for just a kind of a rookie player coming in. Not a rookie player, in the LCS he is, but a less experienced player to be followed like that by your team. Now, with the assurance that he might be able to do good on Ivern, the team says, let's do it. Let's run a new comp, put you on a new unique pick, and we'll see how you do. See what he's got for the green daddy. See if Ivern can deliver Saw that today already in yeah. the previous series Sounds scaring. with uh, TSM C uh, CLG, and now you know C9. I know they have a, a tight knit with a TSM, so they mm -hmm. scream each other quite frequently. But the Ivern seems to be what has come out of that. And Europe knew. Europe had like I 80, was just eighty percent win rate on Ivern. and everything out of my mouth. No, yeah, we see <laughs> it all the time. They have Ivern picks left and right, and we're like, we don't see much of this. We were getting the Elises in, and now the Ivern's. This is great to see. We picks spanning all the regions. So the luxury of Ivern is he gets to start anywhere. Anywhere? Anywhere. Wow. Anywhere. Where would you start? I would start With on this the bottom position. side. Yeah? No. Why so? <laughs> no, where would you start? Uh, as Ivern. So right now, I would start on my Raptors, go red, go blue. Um, or you could do a cheeky start, and you could start on your bottom side, go into their red side, because you know that people just don't really start on the bottom side of the map anymore. So that might be exactly what he's doing. Wolves into blue, into enemy red. Would that be the... <laughs> I love that emote, the spamming the... Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that skin is a little creepy. <laughs> I mean, Ivern by himself is already <laughs> a little bit fruity, but this is this is a new, new level. It's like half his head is missing. <laughs> See these keystones, wind speakers yeah. for Mr. Ivern. So uh, when I was talking about patch, uh, the patch 7.2 the other day, uh, big thing was, hey, Ivern, you know, doesn't need a leash, so he can actually start bottom side. You can interrupt him with damage. It's actually really well played by Hakuo. It delays it a little bit. Now the Graves can go to the red on the opposite side of the map, and he can just trade. So contract. This is actually a super slow start from contracts. Uh, Normally, you, you do two camps, mark them, go over, mark the other of the enemy buff, smite it, but now he's delayed because Ivern doesn't just you know, mark the camp. He has to wait for it to right. actually go all gotta, the way through. chat it up with him. Yeah, he's got to make him feel safe before he releases them, whereas Lyra is actually going to be a little bit ahead here because you're supposed to mark two before you go for an invade, and Contract didn't do that, so he's a little bit behind here in terms of momentum. He marked all three of his uh, right side camps. But he basically got a bottom side jungle red, and he got uh, three camps marked, so he has to go back down bottom. Ooh. Clean little moves by Smoothie and Hakuo there, sidestepping and stepping forward to dodge aggression. And as we see, Contract start to enter in once more. Yeah, he needs late vision that he's holding for. <laughs> <laughs> he needs uh, two more camps before he hits level three here. It's actually uh, looking at Lyra. Lyra didn't even take anything in the jungle on the other side. He's. Uh, he was like, he went for that red, up. and then he was, yep, he was out. Yeah. So he'll hit level three like a, a second before contracts, and those contracts, you know, bows at the camp. If this one gets smited away, then. Yeah, there we go. Three, three. Both of them are level three. I'm surprised Lyra didn't take anything on that top side. That's actually very strange. You know, check the Raptors really quickly, because he could have left some up. Sure. And just been mean. Nope. He didn't take anything except for the red. Everything else is That's... even across the map. A little bit of love towards mid lane here, but it looks like contracts will be seen 
He's been routing his path towards this red side Raptors as we kind of see the jungle split in half, but mm -hmm. Lyra says, I still own this bottom side. Yeah, but this is going to be surprising because Contracts will go back to his top side and be like, these are le these are level one chickens. What? what? Why are they here? Because uh, you expect your Krugs and your Raptors to be gone uh, when you commit to the bottom side of the map and you split the map diagonally uh, straight down the mid lane and say, this is my bottom half, you get the top. Ah, yes, so the Ivern Brush actually gives you vision of the bush. So you put it down yep. to see if there's anything in there. Nothing, and he's trying to make a play. Harlo, heal is on to give Hakuo a bit of speed. Oh, can't get it to root. I don't think anybody would want to take that anyways. Almost getting down Hakuo. So flashes are down, flash and heal, I should say, for the bot side <laughs> of Apollo and Hakuo. Smoothie just had to use his dust. Oh my god. Uh, he didn't even back, he just wanted to eat all the cookies. He's still in there. <laughs> Apollo getting hit. Lyra's going all the way to the back line. Smoothie's trying to get into the brush to deny it, but Contract is shooting from the brush to give vision in the brush. There's so much brush. Waiting for Arrow. They're going to head out of this fight. Oh, that went so closely in favor of Envy. Those are the fights I was talking about last time where Envy comes up short and Cloud9 gets a few kills. Yeah. But this time it's different. We'll see if they can work with it. And that's the disadvantage of the Ivern is he doesn't bring a lot of damage. He right, has the auto right. attack that's empowered, from, but he got exhausted there and just the rest of the team was baited in. They already took a bit of a beating earlier. We'll see here, just a red buff Graves walks up. Yeah, sure, the damage comes off. They can't reach Hakuho, who gets a double root off. And then the Q hit Smoothie there. The flash from Apollo, and the pick up there with Lyra hitting a Q against the wall for the instant explosion. End of the line. Yeah, has the boots already. So uh, Graves, you know, we've seen multiple builds from him. The boots first is just for the mobility, because the, the weakness of the Graves jungle is no CC. So if he's able to keep up with you and stay next to you, that's how he kills you. So the boots, incredibly important. Let's see where they head to now. Lear looks like he wants to get a little bit of vision. He'll also find himself some wards. Top lane very much even this game. 43 to 43 as those guys are just shaking hands, farming out. The teleport did not come in for our first engage. Damage by Ninja coming up. Doesn't have too many items yet. Still pretty high on that mana in lane using dissonance and move. Ooh. Yeah, looking at the items, uh, Sneaky has a cull for himself. Uh, so instead of the tier, this is actually interesting. I like that the Jin uh, goes, okay, you have two long swords and a scaling item. I will take two long swords and a scaling item as well. So that he'll hit, he'll actually hit two items a little bit sooner uh, than Apollo will, which could get into that edge of night Yomu's Ghost Blade power spike a little bit faster than Apollo, and it could make a difference here. So it's something that you want to keep track of, uh, but it's made up by a kill going over to Apollo or something of the likes like that. Because he does have an assist already on the first blood, but it is split between two people, so 100 gold. Impact moving in for a deep ward. He'll get some vision on Lyra and might be able to make something happen here when he crosses over the top side of his map. They already know where he is, so keeping pretty good tabs on that. Cloud9 can make some well-informed decisions. Ninja returns to lane, gets himself a few items, and the first back is Phage and some booties for Jensen. So we'll be able to do a bit more work. Start rocking some packages. <laughs> Good push. Is he going to go anywhere? Ninja? He's going to be seen by a ward as he goes down the river, so I don't think much will come of it. Just putting his own vision down. Yeah, he's getting trying control. To keep, trying to stay moving, though. Envy does not want to give up a bit of a lead here. Yeah, Impact bought the T in that first, so he's trying to at least stabilize that lane, make it so it's one that's uh, favored for the Shen, and that he can shove the Maokai in. Uh, also, Maokais will typically build Spirit Visage first item, so now it actually makes his damage palette both physical damage and magic damage, because it does percent HP magic damage with the Q pass through. But you do have to be wary about making a play on the bottom side here, because C9, they have a Shen, and they have the potential to turn around. Lyra shows bottom. Yeah. And I don't know if this is like the, the Graves show up to lane, shove it in, and get turret damage. I don't think it is, but he's going to lose his blue buff for this. So actually puts Ninja a little bit behind because he's not going to yep. get this. He held for a little bit. Kind of seemed like they wanted to play off the fact that Cloud9's wards were down. They don't have a Sightstone bot lane yet. And no the, forward ward. The Ivern special. So on Ivern kills the second round of buffs. Uh, 
Floop. your ally can pick one up. It just sits on the ground for him. Or if your ally kills a buff, then Ivern can walk up. And that's one of the reasons that like running CDR and runes and stuff like that isn't always great for Ivern, because he will almost always have a blue buff available right. to him. And the build is very supportive as well. You can go Redemption, Athene's Unholy Grail, a lot of the times, depending on the magic damage yeah. of the enemy team, but it is incredibly potent, and I think you should do it most of the time. First and really nice as well with uh, just having Corky in the composition. They made sure to get that going into phase two. Now he can just spit out blue buffs and missiles all day. Yep. Gets red buffs too if he wants them. Impact onto Seraph. The matchup. So he's going down. Yeah. That fight was kind of happening where Impact and Seraph, or I'd say Seraph thought it was just going to be himself the whole time and Impact, but a little roam up from Jensen gets himself the first kill on the game and Cloud9 opens up a little bit. Cloud9 opens up a lot. Turns that around. A retribution kill going over onto Smoothie. And now Haku, I don't know if he wants to fight on Sneaky now. He's going to back up and just clear these out. Mid laners are returning. We'll see if they get a fight down too. It's been pretty active here. It looks like they hold off for now. So kills around the map. It's two for Cloud9 coming in and one for it. So the kill score just evened up after mm -hmm. the gank from Lyra bottom. It Sneaky opens up, Smoothie's gonna return fire. Gets rooted and gets destroyed, but that last shot there, landing. Flash wasn't up for Apollo, it was just off of cooldown. About to come back up, but didn't have it available. I smacked that ward. <laughs> just listen to the sound of the- So whimsical, I love when, when you don't have the bush uh, buff and the ranged auto attacks, Actually, just sounds like he's smacking the ward really hard. It's like, it's like everything he hits. He's only nice to the animals. Yeah. Man-made objects is not Ivern's deal. No, wards are unnatural. Get rid of them all. Yes, he's actually doing a good job of staying on pace. I do think he's actually quite behind though on a. Uh, like he's keeping pace in terms of like. Uh, pressure on the map, but I don't think he's doing a, a wonderful job of staying up in like levels compared to Lyra, because the Graves will just out farm, uh, whereas the Ivern has to take time on his camps. He only gets so many smites every minute, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if he's using them in lanes, he's not using them on camps, he's, not, he's, he's using them to counter jungle, and that's good, but Lyra still just has a little bit of an advantage there. I'd say about like half a level. Looking at the bot lane, 43 on the call. He has 88 stacks on his tier, 92 stacks. Slowly. Oh, that's a slow one, yeah. Slowly getting that one up to par. We saw Hakuo come flying out of base recently with his Moby boots. He went straight for that bot lane, trying to get vision down. It looks like Envy's putting a lot of priority on this turret here. Looking for a dive, It looks like possibly? C9 is, too. Yeah, they, so there's still the possibility that Orianna actually didn't walk uh, didn't mm -hmm. stay and walked all the way down to bottom, and that's what they were playing around, and they're gonna try to make a play on the ninja here. Daisy! Oh, all right, we're still gonna go. Daisy's in, come on, Shockwave! That's on to Jensen. One more turret shot would have taken him down. Whew, that was close. Jensen knew he had to turn away immediately. Good save by Ninja, though. Those are the kills Cloud9 can get and just catapult the game in their favor. Oh, Lyra didn't see contracts at first. Now he has, whoo, da Daisy, get in there! Lighten it. Oh, she's so frosted. Look at that. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> Lyra doesn't mind. He chomps through it, and they're going to keep going for the fight. That gives Cloud9 a little bit of time to reset. It was really just contracts using Daisy to get out of the situation. Lyra. Okay, okay. I knew That is... I saw that coming like a mile away when Lyra was at the Raptors. It's like, I'm just waiting to shoot Jensen with my ultimate. Jensen has regen since then. Like, Jensen has just been playing back. And he's like, you know what? I'll be damned if I don't get my ultimate on to change the fact that he wanted to shoot him with his ultimate. <laughs> Never lie to yourself. Yeah, you do what you want to do. Still wasn't enough to like push Jensen out of the lane even. So, no, Lyra, if his goal was to do that, he he accomplished Ooh. it. So, there's a bit of pain from Apollo going on to sneaky. Good damage there. Already got his lucidity boots, so he can keep casting out the arrows. Seraph is going to say, all right, all right. I see that you have damage and back off for a second. Little Ivern loves Cloud9 contracts moving into the left side of the jungle just to make sure they have tabs on Envy here. As looks like they may be able to also, take a, little, had, or a few more camps in their favor. You had to be on the blue buff immediately when he spawns or Ivern. Wait, smite, you're gone. So 
you have to be on that timer if there's an Ivern in the game. You just have to be there because now he's going to turn the corner. And no, I blue buff is gone. And he's actually not in a position now because he got uh, mm -hmm. bamboozled there. He can't go to the other side of the map uh, to counter and get the other blue buff. It's interesting you can't eat that. Like Rift Herald. The, uh... Like his blue, right? So you can't oh, the one on the ground? Like, no, I'll squish it into the ground. Oh, <laughs> Just stomp it out. Squish the, the candy? <laughs> the candy blue buff? Be like, uh, eat that five-second rule. No. <laughs> Tele teleport back to top lane. <laughs> Looks like a quick vengeful maelstrom from Seraph to stop some damage. He thought there might be somebody else tagging along on that fight. And he backs off. Not too much of a gold lead here accrued by uh, Envy. Cloud9's been able to stifle that. Now with Triforce finished, redemption for contracts finished up. And more control wards coming out. They have some more options. Yeah, redemption, incredibly popular on Ivern. Mm -hmm. Ivern will build defensive items, or I guess... Uh, Utility items for his team the entire time. Defensive items sounds like he's buying like yeah, dead man's plate and stuff, but he's, <laughs> he buys uh, items that are supportive. He'll buy Arden Sensor possibly based on the composition. This might be one that he does it in. Heal there, keep Jensen a little bit alive in, in lane. It'll be all right. Nice try though. And he's still trying to put their foot down not coming up with too much right now. We saw it last game in more of the poke comp where Ninja had Corky as well and Apollo still on the Varus and Cloud9 was just able to avoid that win condition. Stay away from any of the poke and not allow themselves to be sieged off objectives or turrets. So actually they poked off and then see. Yeah. And look at that. The other blue buff goes over to Jensen and it was picked up by contracts. It's like he's just going to have blue buffs if yeah. you're not on top of it. Um, that's the thing. Play against a lot of Ivern's in professional play. It, it's something that North America hasn't really been seeing. And a bit of a surprise here as well. Uh, actually, I'm not surprised that we see it, but it seems like a surprise to Envy. Yeah. You can see that in the timing. Not it, not able to give these blue buffs over as well for Ninja. If they want this, this composition to go a little late and Seraph to get big, having Orianna with that blue buff late game means she can dance around, deliver a lot of that damage as well as utility to the team. So... That's pretty big hurt to not have that in as well for Oriana, but 174 to 158, good farming by Gen or, uh, Ninja in the mid lane. And Ninja's doing a great job right now above that 10 per minute mark, so yeah. he's getting a little extra on the sides. <laughs> he's a ninja. Ivern goes over. Sneaky. All right, the ward. Where's the lockdown? Daisy's out. Is there a link? There is onto Apollo. The final one as the curtain drops. It doesn't look like they're stopping for Hakuo. Impact's in for this fight. Flashes forward to make sure it still counts. And they're going to be able to pick up the bot lane of Envy. Mid's getting a little bit of love. Jensen, Valkyrie's away. First hurt, though. And that will... Yes, it will be. Next turret goes down. So Envy picks up a bit more gold there, holding their cash lead. But again, we saw this happen before. They had that lead. And Cloud9 starts to work the map a little better. Yeah, here's the thing though, is Cloud9 could get a tempo advantage here by pushing and continuing to push if they wanted to. Uh, but I think they're going to reset the map. Maokai on top lane. Should be able to get it. Okay, good. Yeah, that's low. Oh, wow. Might be a two for one here. Yeah, Lyra uh, with the Graves making his way up there just in case. But it's going to be two turrets for Envy. Look at that. No wonder Impact did the most damage last game. <laughs> it's the champion. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> This is good though. They actually the volley one more time. Yeah, they synergize. Even though they both got hit by an arrow, they don't shy away from this fight. Contracts gets the ultimate, flashes forward, puts his shield down as well. And then Apollo locked up. Had to blow, blow both summoner spells, but still didn't do anything for him there either. He still gets caught. Impact blows his flash to catch Hakuo. It kills me to watch Ivern just walk <laughs> along and fight. He's he's legit just a trolley champion. Like it's so good. If if you're ever a supportive troll, like you're trolley, but you're like I still want to help, then that Ivern's a champion for you. Just derping around. Like he's actually rage inducing to the enemy team. <laughs> just because it looks like he's having so much fun all the time, not a care in the world. That's when there's a problem. When the cutest thing in the game is is rage inducing. Timo, what? <laughs> exactly. That's. Coming up on 18 minutes, you see the mid lane difference here between these two. Jensen, just usually above uh, above the rest at 10, 15, and 20. It's insane. Yeah, and just having a consistent CS differential for Jensen mm -hmm. uh, means that he is, he is having a great time in this mid lane. And Ninja? Yeah, I'm gonna run away from Daisy. Yeah, this is a game where he doesn't have that type of CS differential. 
That's very true. Doesn't seem to stop him from clearing that roaming. We have seen contracts a bit more to the mid lane when that roam comes down. Yeah, this is uh, this is how this matchup is supposed to go, right? Just carving his name into the tree. <laughs> <laughs> Shen plus no come back here come back here <laughs> but I love you <laughs> oh God, please but, all right all right so, Envy has actually been pretty good at picking up dragons we did see that cloud nine was able to get the two oceans in the previous game but Envy oh. trying to put their foot down and as I say that <clears throat> friendly Ivern contracts coming up with a very nice steal there rage inducer <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing because you're not the one playing against him. He just walked up, he smited it, and had a good time. He put pressure on the Lyra. Lyra actually smited it, and I believe he uh, he missed it. And we'll see what, what he hit there. Oh, was, was it two missed smites? And then they kind of just they hit it. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a, a kill from a smite. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I watched it back! Lyra smited Daisy! <laughs> Daisy was. She got in the way! She got a big cupcake butt in the way! <laughs> he missed the smite because of it. <laughs> oh man. No! <laughs> Things you wish you didn't do. Oh. Uh, big cupcake butt. Wait. <laughs> you have the best descriptions. Uh, Ninja. <laughs> it's a literal does, one. <laughs> during our recap of the replay on our screens, yeah. we did see. Oh, actually, get. But I want to see it again. Here. See it again. See, he smited Daisy. <laughs> well, it didn't even come down. Look, to he's the like, smite I'm out of here. I smited the cupcake. It's not, it's like, that's that's not a bad thing to do though, because Daisy has so much HP just to like get it down and then smite it away from Ivern, because a lot of his utility in the fights, uh, in the big team fights, comes from Daisy. But Daisy just walks right over it and just covers his cursor. Rage inducing <laughs> flashbacks, man. Ninja able to grab a blue throughout this entire thing, which was very nice. That's been a little crazy, although they did just lose the dragon. So sprint up towards the top side of the map and try and regain some control of things. Still a bit in the lead with gold, but Cloud9 yep. continues to hold that macro game in their favor. Now Jensen's towards the top lane. They're going to be starting. Who start words? Yep. Jensen is starting to spread the team thin. But I will say for Envy, this is better than a lot of teams have done against Cloud9. Holding up, being in a bit of an advantage here, and they're trying to make a play with the CC. Impact movie is coming in. There is a whole lot of Cloud9 Lyra. members floating up the river right now. Lyra is going to get popped out. He flashes away. Jensen forward, almost under the turret, but he gets locked up as well. Another twisted advance from Sarah. Sneak, he's looking. Oh. oh, he finds his mark behind the turret with the eagle eye curtain call. And it's now going to be Contracts looking for another one. Root collar over the wall, but nobody to accept the distance but Daisy and himself. So they're going to hold off on this one. Shields him. And Cloud9... It, Jensen looked like he was in a lot of trouble. Yep, it and was. And then the, the team turned it in their favor. It was the caster curse right there. Like a lot of teams have done a lot worse against Cloud9. Cloud9 make the play. They get the lead. Now they're gonna push down. Take control of it. Oh, Trying to make a hey. turn play. He has the flash. Yeah. That's what I like to see. Flash Ori plays. Sometimes you gotta take things into your own hands. And Ninja does so. Putting Sneaky to sleep. For Thirty seconds. <laughs> no tears. Only sleeps. No tears. He uh he flashed previously to get away from the Zyra ultimate up top or else he may have died there, and yep. that's where Ninja takes advantage of it. We'll see it on the right side of the screen in a bit, but this looked like Jensen was in trouble, you're right, but he has the support of the Ivern, gets the heal of the Redemption, and then the Shen finally comes through after the uh, oh. Stand United. Sneaky will open up in the bush. There this is hits, and then Hakuo opens up on Sneaky, so he doesn't find doesn't fire the final shot. Ninja, though, they know he doesn't have flash because he had to use it there. Oh, slow, speed, speed, slow, dissonance, command, protect. Oh, they're going to turn it back onto impact. This could take a while, though. They finally focus the damage down, and they're able to drop him. Seraph pushing down this bot lane. He actually kind of face flashed into Jensen to get that work, so his flash is down now, mm -hmm. coming up for the next fights. But Envy's going to move as a team together and see if they can get power in numbers here. And this seems like they don't want to make a play on bottom and get that turret. They want to prevent the mid turret from going down. It's double AD. They may get something back for this. It is an Ivern. They prevent it. They've gotten themselves into trouble before trying to do this with too many members. Oh, is that? His low flash forward from Apollo. He's able to get the drop on contracts. Impact still coming back up, but with the minions all in the middle of the map, Envy still has work to do before they can get more. That was super good from Envy in terms of macro right there because you see that bottom lane turret, it's incredibly low. They say we will revisit for that. Instead, they go mid. They use their numbers advantage. They catch out the tank list composition because yep. Shen was dead, and then they just end up getting that turret. They get priority bottom lane. and I'm sorry, they prevent their turret going down, and they get this bottom turret. 
So Envy actually made the right play instead of trying to go for this turret. That was really well done. And definitely a fresh breath of air here for Envy coming into this second game from game one. Pretty handily won by Cloud9. They were able to find the, the win condition they had, the errors Envy made, and it was kind of all from five minutes on. Envy has staved that off this game and now kind of matching items on the way up. Doing quite well, looking back at Apollo. 368 to 750, so still the tier is stacking, but much better this game, and Ninja has actually found a few results in the mid lane. Uh, Ninja with the loot and Zeko now, and contracts, walk back, pick it up, wait for it, there you go. Ivern now has the locket and the redemption. He actually upgraded his to a tracker's knife, so we'll be tracking that a little bit more of how often the Ivern's actually upgrade their item and when they do it, because we almost never see them dip gold into uh, their jungle item at all until very late into the game because it delays their utility, it delays their locket, yep. you know, it delays the uh, the items with the actors that they really want. Which he already has now. It means they may be able to get their hands a bit more dirty. You got 20 seconds on the Infernal Drake coming right up too for Cloud9 would be quite nice. He might even get some big damage out of Ivern. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll give him a nice smack. Yep. But this, this is a little bit interesting as we watch the setup for this because there's no TP on Seraph. Seraph will come down. There's both globals available for impact. So this is a full commitment by Envy to try and get this Drake. Yep. Uh, Ivern is there. He doesn't actually have the backup of Smoothie. So as the approach is important here and the time that's spent down here because Apollo actually is needing full HP himself. This is where they jockey for position. The calls to impact are there. He can get to somebody with Stand United, but he could also use a teleport or vice versa and get back to lane after this push if they can get the win. Lyra does get that one. Bullet Apollo time dead. to lock up Seraph. And it looks like Impact does take the Stand United in. He will be with his team and they will take a double kill off of that fight. And this may be C9 trying to make a Baron power play here. They know that Seraph doesn't have TP, so even when he comes up, it wouldn't matter. But Apollo got picked off there. Ivern, he is so hard to approach an Ivern that's on the Baron. He can use Daisy to zone. He can put the Baron in a bush and you can't actually see the Baron as the enemy team unless you have a ward directly on it or somebody in there. It is so frustrating. We'll see what happens here because Lear is going to try to look for the smite steal. He's out of a ward. He's got to do it off timing. Throws the smoke over. Ninja's getting hurt, so they have vision of the team pulling off. That nose damage on Baron has lessened, but they're still trying to focus it. Lyra making the decision of a lifetime here in game number two. Can he save Envy? It's going to be going down. It goes to contract. Lyra doesn't get over the wall, and it looks like Cloud Knight's now going to try and chase him out. Hakuo, the rest of the team, heads south. Lyra oh! goes in for the fight. He says, if I'm going down, I'm going down fighting. But it just goes down. He almost took down two with him, <laughs> but there was a quick shield there that I saw, and also you know, the Baron inside of that bush uh, just disappears in and out of vision <laughs> right before it went down as well. Looked like it was disappearing. Apollo gets the last hit here. He's actually, yeah, he gets he gets sniped by Sneaky there with that last shot, uh, and he was trying to tank some of them for his teammates, and then the MF ulti came out, and he was just gone. So that actually cost them uh, that Baron. And now Envy, oh, they made the play for the the Drake, but it ended up costing more than they thought it would. Now the stranglehold begins. You know you feel more powerful when you have the Baron buff. And Cloud9 was already starting to feel that before they were able to get it. And they're head to that dragon fight. Set up wards. They saw all of Envy coming down from mid. And you saw Jensen and the rest of the team just kind of hug up towards the blue side. And then they came back into the fight very nicely played. Just kind of yo-yo back and forth, making sure they don't lose anybody, and making sure Seraph can't be that first guy to engage. Yeah, Seraph doesn't have the same uh, impact in this game that Impact had in the previous game on Maokai. Uh, he, impact is winning that top lane matchup, uh, played it appropriately. He's had some really good yep. ultimates into the fights, and you can see just it's night and day difference in terms of the setup from the team, but also just the individual play that's happening in that top lane. Uh, and I will say that it, uh, Jensen, this guy, the strategy that's been happening is the 1-3-1 for a lot of Cloud9's games. Impact and Jensen become split-pushing beasts, whether it's a Fizz, whether it's this hold on. Whew, deleted! There's some damage that Void Staff has completed, so he is firing right through the HP of Cloud9. Smoothie won't be up, and now we'll see how Cloud9 reacts to this. He's still gonna work the bottom side of the map. A lot of teams would back up control the aggression, but they're gonna go ahead and make more, even without the support. Impact's in, they're on to Hakuo, and they leave oh. no time without fighting. 
They go back to the bot lane, make sure something happens. A little retribution there for Smoothie as they pick up the bot tier turret as well. Lyra, what do you do? Top side of the fight, Lyra wants to keep going. Almost drops Jensen. Apollo couldn't get enough arrows off to cancel out any of these health bars. And Sneaky walks away low. Jensen walks away low. And again, Envy come up just short on some kills. Yeah, but that's big for Cloud9. That's oh, enough huge. to start propelling them in this game towards a victory because they're 5,000 gold up and they just take everything out of the bottom jungle. They have that bottom tier two down and Impact use the stand United to get in there. So he has teleport advantage now. And then the Titanic Hydra comes out because that's just how much he wants to be dealing <laughs> damage and split pushing because it's a great split push item. We'll see what uh, else comes through for his build here. Ninja gets crit. Corky just does so much damage. And this right here, Sneaky with the W. Jensen's like, I see it. I got it. The flash forward into the rocket so he can't react. It already blown the flash. And then Lyra wants to come through. It's so hard to assassinate somebody when there's a oh. heal, there's Ivern, who's just throwing down shields, making funny sounds too, and he's got Locket and Redemption. It's just so much and so frustrating to actually play against an Ivern that is protecting two fed carries. Yep. It's good to see Cloud9 still putting the pedal to the metal. You know full well they're up due to the towers they took and the advantage they have, they're going to win that fight, but they did not hesitate. Some teams kind of reserve themselves and say, yeah, we're a man down. Let's not try to take this right away. There is no stopping right now. Cloud9's ahead. 13 to 6, 30 minutes in on this one. And what was a, a bit of a 1,000 gold lead here for Envy for quite a while has now been a 6,000 gold lead for Cloud9 as they take out the outer turrets after the last three to go. I'm trying to think of how many blue buffs I've just seen fly over to Contracts because mm -hmm. he has had complete control of this jungle. From the get-go, even when he stole a buff in the bottom, he didn't get punished. The topside punish from Lyra was, I just take your buff, and then I don't farm all of your topside jungle. It's, uh, it was a little bit confusing because Contracts then went back, revisited. Uh, right, in the early game, yeah. Normally, that's like, oh no, I'm a level four, uh, a level three Ivern to a level four Graves. So that's not what happened this game. Sneaky working on the mid lane. Not sure it wasn't long for this world. You see the gold difference and the swing in this game. Yep, I will say though that that's a little bit uh, later for Cloud9 for their shot calling and their snowball to turn online. And we got a good advantage off of uh, Lyra in the early game. Mm -hmm. uh, the turret went down in their favor as well, and they made a, a great play that got them too, if you remember early on, where they were able to get the top turret and the bot turret. Uh, so Envy, oh, this team, sure, they're at the bottom of the standings and last. But this team against Cloud9 and what we had seen yesterday, they look a little bit better than, we, than the yep. record indicates. Don't know how much better, but it's a little bit better. So there are hopes now for uh, Envy fans, because you know, the team is not sitting at that 10th place alone, and they do have some, uh, some time to actually get things together, because as uh, teams like Immortals will know, it is about how you perform in playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's not always about the regular season. you got to make playoffs, but you do have to perform and take all of these uh, mistakes as lessons yeah. and learn from them. It's difficult to do week to week. You think, you know, oh, they messed this up this week, but there could be, not these teams, just teams in general. Yeah. As you said, making those changes. From week to week, they could already be working on some fundamental things. We've heard that from teams in the past say, yeah, we know how to play the game. We're actually just working on something behind the scenes right now. And that can sometimes trouble a team especially when you get new players. In yeah, and I think that Envy, though, have some pretty good synergy with each other. I think it's mm -hmm. uh, what I had heard previously. If uh, the team accepts that failure or mistakes are a part of process, so you know, they will start off 0-4, yeah. but they will learn from it. And that's what that's what you're hoping for from this squad, because up against Cloud9, you know, there's a lot to learn from this, because they did have an advantage. Envy had uh, the early game. They had winning lanes in the previous game. They had about two of them. And this one, playing with some losing lanes, but it wasn't out of their control. Let's see what they can put back in their control. Right now, not impact. He's all alone in the bot lane. That's going to have to be respectful, <laughs> like, Sarah. If he already starts to mosey down, and now impact's going to be able to just kind of toy with him, do whatever he wants, join the team if there's a fight. Ah, there. Yep, impact with that level 17, two levels up over Sarah at the Ooh. moment. Has both globals available, has the Titanic Hydra, has the makings of his rot <laughs> portal, so. Next time he goes back, he'll be able to purchase that. And then he'll have his split push completely online. If Seraph leaves, you know, Impact has the option to join, has the option to put down a, a Zerat portal and then join. Like That's kind of the uh, the strength that we've seen Impact flex already on Shen and also having his Zerat portal mm -hmm. is 
if the enemy TPs away, Zerat Portal TP, Zerat Portal follow immediately. They won't clear your Zerat Portal. They don't have time. They have to make their way to the fight. You have ways to get in, especially since the Stand United is faster than the Teleport for Arrival. So you can even spend that extra second to put down the Zerat Portal. It's about a second and a half faster. Three seconds as opposed to four and a half. Oh. Math with Cyrene. Yeah. Time. time with Cyrene more so. <laughs> I could have done the math. The, the, skill, the, the skills. The kills have slowed it down. As we see, Envy very, very weary of losing anybody this close to the base because Cloud9 can really do some damage with this composition. Looks like one more item for Jensen. He'll be full build, as well as Sneaky, who has the Dust Blade for himself here on Jen. Yeah. I expect uh, Void Staff would be the last item for Jensen, mm -hmm. uh, which you typically see from Corky since they do about 70% magic damage. Don't know if it'll get to that point, because Baron on the table. You can see Cloud9 are posturing towards it, having impact with the split push. Seraph may have to come back down to this bottom lane, or they'll try to make a play up here, try to use the fact that Seraph is on this top side. But I think that C9 will pull off and make sure that impact can get in a better position now. So they're going to pull the tank. They're going to pull the one tank away, bring him down to the bottom side. And impact is just stronger as well right now. Ninja could be able to sideswipe the rest of the team here. Oop. Apollo's too low to participate in a big fight. One. A big one from Jensen. Very nicely aimed around the corner. Is able to drop Apollo. So bot lane here. And that summoner flash, or summoner heal down, I should say. As they make their way towards Baron. This is going to be not fightable. Unfightable. Non-contestable. Uncontested. <laughs> not fightable, huh? <laughs> I've seen some of those in my days. You just dive in anyway. You go for it. But right now, Zrop Portal just hit down on the bottom side. Impact is just trying to get this turret. Zrop Portal, no, it doesn't hold the minion wave. It will kill turrets, though. It does way more damage than before. You yep, can they're looking do for it. an opportunity. Oh, flashes right out of the curtain call. Tries to get the shock wave in. It looks like they're going to get dropped on the top. Oh, Jensen. There goes Ninja. There goes Hakuo. Jensen with that damage. 6 0. 7 on the Corky this game. The team's going to be able to pick up Baron. Hit it. In the brush by contracts, nobody saw it happen. Zizra already, or Zerat, I should say, causing trouble in the bot lane. We'll have Apollo pick this up. And that's her, that's gonna go down quick. They're gonna split this probably just around the map since Cloud9 is strong enough. Coming in 11,000 gold here. 36 minutes into the game, they'll start topside. Now Impact just clears out the jungle, just starts pulling people to the bottom side of the map because everybody's on that top side. He has teleport, so he could teleport into the top. He could teleport back down bottom. I do think he might hold the wave there. We'll see what happens with Cloud9, because they they have priority here. He could TP in with Home Guard. See what he decides to do, because he's still just sitting there on the pad. Have to give it up. There it is. Contract's basically moving safety forward with this brush. Gotta love the Ivern. Oh, and she's back. Daisy back up again. It's like a two or like about five to get overlap. There he goes. Still focusing, Seraph, see, another, Lyra can't even get on the side Jensen. here. They try to go Jensen in, down. that's gonna be Contracts as well. He'll be coming back up from the GA. Jensen's damage is gone, and Envy still has to turn. Apollo firing from the back, dodging deadly flourishes. Seraph is saying, fire over my shoulders, guys. Pie to the face, <laughs> hit him where you can. And there's, they're just on the fountain. Envy can't do much. Cloud9 has amassed such a lead. Envy can only find safety on the fountain, trying to come out for one last fight. Envy, Ninja, throwing in the clockwork windups. Apollo just behind him as well. They're doing everything they can, holding their breath. They saved the base just because of the fact that there aren't enough minions to win it right now, but Cloud9 is only going to come back stronger. Yep, Elder Dragon about to come up as well, so Cloud9 can back. They can start making their way towards that if they do want to put that last little nail in the coffin. Seraph goes forward. He actually flashes and Twisted advances onto Jensen, gets the ball onto him, and then that's the shock that comes through. Contracts has his Woo. PA pop. He was trying to save Jensen there, maybe get a locket off or mm -hmm. at least assist him. But Jensen goes down. But then it was just the cleanup on the back line like you were talking about. There's <laughs> Hakuo is gone at that moment. Yeah. And there's just nobody to really uh, assist in uh, the damage at that point with Apollo zoned off too. What a nice engage coming from Seraph and Ninja there. The team had the right idea. Cloud9 again, keeping themselves spread in a fight. So Looking for the shockwave. You only get a few people. He's hiding it. They're trying. I wonder if they can still see it. He got it! Shockwave, the Elder Dragon over to Envy. They got to get back to their base and hold this off. 
going to be Lyra. It's going to be the rest of the team. They will be all right. Huge play coming out of Ninja on the Orianna. Yeah, you can put it in a bush. You can hide it, but the ball is still going to give vision. So he puts it in the shockwave. Ninja coming up big there. Also a little bit of assistance there from Lyra. They tried to make sure that their burst was at the same time. You can see that's still going to give him vision there. Even with all of the, uh, the plants hitting it, they're just doing this damage. Wow. Okay, that was Sneaky critting it for 1,100. So Sneaky did more than a Smite would have, uh, and it put it in range of the Shockwave there. That, it just did 100 damage for the cleanup. That's an amazing chance, too, because Shockwave has the spin up before uh -huh. it actually hits. So you, you can hear, a lot of people will hear that be able to flash out. Yeah, you want a Shockwave Smite W through. right there and try to do enough damage, but Sneaky, that, that's not the jungler's fault. I'm not putting that on the jungler. Sne sneaky did the most damage. <laughs> it's the person who does the most damage. <laughs> their fault. So he's a courteous sneak. There you go. <laughs> Very courteous of him. All right. So it's a little bit of, little bit of life in Envy now with this Elder. The Baron minions are still going to be incredibly hard. Apollo's not going to be able to clear him too fast, and this turret is going down. Curtain Call is going to drop them back. It may just give him enough time to drop the inhibitor before the home guard heal even comes up on Apollo. Yep. And it will be. Just coming up on 40 minutes. That's about the last bit Cloud9 has to do, except for the mid turret here as they make their way there. And already is a rock portal that was pushed up by yes. impact, so it's relatively close. You can see you want to put it about this distance away because they just die so quickly based on distance travel. And they also die in one shot now, so it's a, yep. a, a good change. Just help people who are already at turrets kill turrets if they're split pushers, like the Shen, uh, instead of just holding and stalling the wave because they have very low HP but they deal a ton of damage to these turrets. And you can see Impact, he's doing uh, doing a thing where you don't group up with your team, you split push and just assist waves in because somebody either has to deal with you or if they try to five man your mid and your, your mid lane just pushes up, you just get a good flank. You can walk in, you can get a taunt onto their back line. You threaten them from two angles, the front and from the back or from the right side if you're Impact. Muramana finished 40 minutes in here. I'm gonna activate that one. Maybe one of the final fights. He's gonna try to put it onto Ninja and Seraph. Third hit pop up. One more for that. Can't get it in. Great curtain call from the backside, but Envy's actually holding off the minions as well as damage to the turret here. Gotta care about bot side. Things are going Ooh. to only get harder if this top wave can enter the base along with this bot one. So looking at the items purchased, the Knight's Vow comes through for impact, and he put it onto Jensen. So the Knight's Vow will make it so that the person, when they deal damage, doesn't matter what type of damage, you put it on a mage, you could put it on whoever your highest damage dealer is, it heals you for the amount. Uh, for about 12%, I believe, was the number that's on it. And then you also take their damage. So you take 12% of their damage. It is dealt to you as true damage, though. Uh, so you do have to be a little bit wary of that if they're say, like, putting it on another tank or something. Yeah. You'll be taking more damage because it's not mitigated. But it is very, very good at making sure that Jensen stays alive, which is one of the win conditions, or one of the way that you, ways that you ruin the win conditions yep. of Cloud9 is if Envy get a shockwave like before and they blow up Jensen, they have no time to react. So this gives them a little bit more time to get a shield on him, get a locket shield on him, whatever it takes to keep Jensen up. So I like that from Impact, but he does have to be close to actually absorb that damage. Getting to that point, Elixir is just about in every inventory. We saw Lyra had Elixir of Wrath on. Sorcery there for Ninja. Give himself a little bit more punch through his attacks. And I'm sure Cloud9 is doing that as well since full items. They have nothing else they can put in their inventory. A few more scrying orbs popping out for them so they can keep vision on the map. MV looking for a good shockwave. Haku has been trying to get himself to the side of these fights next to the wall, almost getting caught by a few deadly flourishes. So eyes on Haku, Haku here to start. Obviously going to be that long teleport in from Seraph. So as well, the shockwave could from Ninja make this fight turn in their favor. Yep, but this is a Baron that yep. Cloud9 have complete control of the area for. There's no vision anywhere close to it for Envy. And they still have that bottom inhibitor down. If they leave, Zerat Portal is available. One, the pushes. 1v5 impact. Here he goes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, just buying time. This is uh, uh, the impact special waste time, and that's going to be the Baron. That's going to be Chain of Corruption as well. A little CC loss for the fight as they come in. And they will sweep their way top side down in. Hit that inhibitor. Looks like Jensen's going to be the one to push down mid lane. And Cloud9 looking to put the final touches on here. 
Given a pretty tough run by Envy coming throughout the game, especially after game one, Envy was able to turn some things around here, but Cloud9 still finding that high caliber of play towards the mid game, putting it in their favor. And now look for this inhibitor and mid lane. Trying to get those inhibitors down. Impact on the bottom side. I believe he placed his drop portal right by the inhibitor. So he's just having waves push in. Lyra has to answer. And meanwhile, Daisy is just smacking away on minions. They're getting that inhib slowly but surely on the top side. Contract's laying down bushes so he has those ranged attacks. And now they're just going to focus mid again. Uh, his drop portal actually got picked up there. So, yep. That's a, that's a pretty good KDA. It's just it's getting better, too, because this game so far, he's an 8.0. And he's... 100 CS up over Sarah. There goes Daisy, just getting damage on the turret. They're trying to zone, trying to get some smacks on these turrets. You take this one down, it's just that inhibitor. Seraph actually has the ball on him. They're waiting for an engage if they can get a group up of Cloud9, but still they stay spread. Top left side might be that entry, but you have oh! Edge of Night locking them out. Hakuo gets taken out, bullet time strides through the team as Impact locks them down. Ventral Maelstrom was there as well, just leaving Cloud9 extremely healthy. Beautiful job. Seraph could not help the team out whatsoever. Impact in, Impact out, and it looks like they're gonna be going for the Nexus turrets now. 21 to seven. Cloud9 finding their way all the way to the Nexus this time. It took them a few on the base entry, but they do find the win. They do find the 2-0. Cloud9 taking down enemy. Cloud9 still undefeated. The team to beat in the NALCS has not been touched yet. It looked a little different this time too. Contracts coming in on the Ivern. A few of the other champion picks are always something we see here. The Shen, the Corgi, those are tried and true to the Cloud9 composition, but they can continuously work around these different picks. Continuously with Contracts, which continues once again to impress. <laughs> yeah, contracts showing a bit of flexibility there. The Ivern being pulled out, uh, going for the utility build like you would on. A little bit more than that. 100 CSF for impact in the top lane. They really did crush this game. And Cloud9 right now is like, all right, going 5 and 0 so far. Where does it end? Where does it start catching up to them? Because right now, they look at the other teams. Like Cloud9 definitely looks the cleanest right now, and they only seem to be improving and diversifying. They aren't staying in that same style that we've seen some top teams just right. continue to do. This game was a little bit rough against Envy, because Envy had a lead at one point, but where does Cloud9 get stopped? Or do they? Or do they? <laughs> Find out next time on the NALC. <laughs> <laughs> same bat channel. It has been quite the season start for them. We've seen this from Cloud9 before, and usually has been an organization to at least hold a bit of that consistency. So I don't think we should expect to see them drop from the top anytime soon. Envy trying to climb that ladder, as you said, showing a little bit better throughout these games and definitely to take notice that they gave Cloud9 a hard time. And I'm sure they'll be looking at that as well to see where they went right and then quickly where it went wrong. It was a bit of that unfortunate play where we'd see Jensen or Contracts go in for a play and walk out with 100 and then they turn that around and kill three members of Envy. Now, obviously that means there's a problem with the, the engagement or what happened, but that's it's something to look at. Yeah, and I think that this is a really great uh, example to kind of extrapolate from. You see like, oh, when a, when a gold player versus like a challenger player, the big difference is like, oh, it doesn't know how to do this or this or this. There's like really big ticket things. Uh, but when you look at a game like this and you're just like, okay, the difference here is like Envy, if you played these guys in solo queue as five members, you would probably just get crushed, right? Or if you had a five man team, you'd probably Guaranteed. get crushed, right? Guaranteed. Uh, but then they're like, okay, we're really good. There's slight optimizations that you see Cloud9 do instead. They take the bottom turret and then Envy don't go top. Right. They start going back and forth. They lose their top turret. If that's Cloud9, we saw Cloud9 take top turret then they put their Maokai in the bottom lane in game one. Optimization there. The teleport. The, in speed, the, the speed of placement. The wards, wards yeah. exactly. The fact that they were like, okay, we've done this before. Place the ward down. And there down. were multiple. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody was trying to contribute there. That's all they needed is a ward down. Slide optimization in the way that they got into the fight. right? So Envy were kind of winning those fights until that happened. So Envy oh, kind of got baited in. But I think that these are, these are things that they can look at and just be like, okay, we just need to tighten this up here. No, make sure that it's a little bit better. And Envy, I'm excited to see because they have definitely grown a lot in this last week. Their macro looks okay. Yep. There's still optimizations, like I said, they need to make. But it doesn't look like a complete disaster like it did before. Nope. They should be able to make the changes in Cloud9 looking better than ever. For a first-hand account, let's hear from Kobe, who's joined by Cloud9.